Yo, this video has been brought to you by ExpressVPN once again. Thanks, guys. So, one thing that's really fascinated me is the routine of people, both contemporary and historical, that do art for a living, or at least are self-employed and can dictate their own schedules. Painters, musicians, writers, comedians, prostitutes, etc. Because I remember not that long ago, I used to struggle to figure out what to do during summer break without my parents' help. And when I look at myself now, my daily routine, if I had to write it down, would look like this. 7 a.m., wake up. And I've usually fucked it up by then. So because of this, I've always looked at other people's routines for guidance, and it really made me understand a lot of these guys more. Like when most people think of an artist, they immediately think of creative geniuses like Mozart or Michelangelo, and start thinking that their brain exploded with ideas and was this endless pool of inspiration that flowed out of their fingertips. But in reality, for a guy like Mozart, it was a lot more like playing a couple chords after each other and thinking, yeah, these are some chill classical chords to compose slash study to. Or Michelangelo staring at a blank canvas and thinking, yeah, I better start painting this naked boy before someone walks in. And at least in my amateur experience, making YouTube videos, not painting naked boys, uh, the creative process is pretty ugly. And while everyone's had these moments of inspiration where you come up with something you think is brilliant in an hour or two, you can't rely on that if you want it to be your job. One of the best quotes that describes the process is from a guy named William Faulkner, who apparently said, I only write when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, it strikes at nine every morning. With that said, I honestly had no idea who he was before I read that, so it shows how good his process was. But I do relate to the idea. I think in my entire YouTube experience, I've only been inspired to make a whole video once, and every other time it was only when I sat down with the premium box wine did it start coming to me. And while researching creative people, what I've learned is, besides doing a lot of drugs obviously, uh, is that almost all of them eventually fell into some type of daily routine that was surprisingly consistent and well-rounded. But what did surprise me is the most well-established artists were actually remarkably unproductive in their creative output. I forget who I was reading, again, probably the boxed wine, but they described themselves something like this. And then, from 9am to 6pm, I would work in a flurry, barely taking a second off the typewriter except for a brief reprise at 1pm sharp for tea and toast. But then, enraptured by the call of my imagination, I would return promptly to the task, working uninterruptedly until exhaustion. On some days I would finish two or even three thousand words before slipping into a two-day slumber. And I remember thinking, wait a second, Two or three thousand words in nine hours? This guy made it sound like he had a typewriter for each hand in his massive writer's dong, but homie was out here barely hitting five words per minute on a good day. And while I've forgotten who that guy was, probably George R. R. Martin's more productive cousin, the irony is that two thousand words in a day was actually way on the high end of professional writers that I researched, which for context is a bit under three pages on a Word document. In fact, most novelists would average five hundred to a thousand words, about one page, and those that did more tended to work fewer days or take breaks after a book was done. Painters might get half a painting done unless it was Bob Ross, and SoundCloud rappers would only record two or three albums. As another example, the most prolific stand-up comedians will do about an hour's worth of material every year. Many take about five years to completely refresh a set, which is the equivalent of writing two seconds worth of jokes a day, and then most amateurs or hobbyists never even write more than 15 minutes of material, period. Of course, performing is a big part of stand-up, but the huge takeaway for me was that accomplishing anything worthwhile creatively was about consistency, and not at all about speed or even motivation. In specific, the most productive writers and painters who shut themselves in and could bang out 10,000 words a day or did 10 original paintings a day, did not outperform those who did one-tenth of that because the quality of their output ended up being way lower. And side note, they also seem to be way more single and kind of weird. So what is the sweet spot? If you could make your own schedule, what should it look like and how much time should go towards serious productive output? Well, it depends on what works for you. Just kidding, I hate when people say that shit. So here's the bare bones template for a daily schedule that I came up with when looking at the average of your Benjamin Franklins, Winston Churchills, Friedrich Nietzsche's, and also the average of your whole group of notable and accomplished creative people. Wake up slightly before the sun comes up, usually 5 to 7 a.m. Don't worry, as they say, it's the thought that counts. After waking up, do a crossword, shower, or menial task for about an hour as your body wakes up and your wife makes you breakfast. Again, I know expecting your wife to make you breakfast might be a bit archaic, but remember, most of these guys live in the past when it was still very normal to have a wife. 9 a.m., have some coffee, tea, or smoke your cigar as you go to your art cottage and start writing, painting, or whatever is your most important work. Now what I noticed in my research was that pretty much every creative person had a separate location that they would work in rather than their house. And this led me to the number one insight I had regarding successful artists, which is already be rich when you start. 
Around 12 p.m., finish your main work for the day and have lunch. Around 1 p.m., exercise or go for a walk. No joke, I was actually really surprised that basically every single person I read about did this. The trend was either a short, intense session for an hour and then coming back to do around three hours of low intensity work like editing, writing letters and organizing, or it was a two to three hour walk through the forest followed by one more hour of intense work if you had any breakthroughs. It seemed like every successful person ever went on walks through the forest, so I think we can probably infer that it meant mushrooms. Around 5 p.m., go home and have dinner. 6.30 p.m., everyone married either did recreational activities or light socializing, and everyone single hit the clubs of Old England, and then they all went to sleep by 11 or 12. Now, if you're like me, after hearing that daily schedule, you might be thinking, well, yeah, all that stuff is pretty obvious, as you casually glance at the related videos to see if you'd be getting out of bed anytime soon. Or maybe you're at work and about to get fired. These are honestly just Hail Marys at this point. We all know everyone who watches these videos is unemployed. Nevertheless, uh, despite all my efforts to figure out what the ideal personal schedule would be and hoping it would be hidden, unearthed knowledge, to be honest, it's about as basic as you can get. But I did get to make this Why Do I Feel So Good All The Time starter pack. So once again, big thanks to the sponsor ExpressVPN, the number one rated VPN by TechRadar, CNET, The Verge, Comparatech, and many more, which is a service that lets you reroute your IP address to nearly any country in just one click. I actually have a recent VPN experience where I was in Germany for a StarCraft tournament and my credit card didn't work because my credit rating immediately went to zero when I told my bank I was going to a StarCraft tournament. Anyway, I couldn't pay the utilities at the place I was staying, so they billed me online, but when I got home, I couldn't pay it because I wasn't in Germany anymore. So long story short, ExpressVPN saved the day by fooling them into thinking I was still in Germany, but technically ended up costing me 24 euros 50 in utilities when I think about it. Nevertheless, I know my credit card is safe because ExpressVPN servers can't store logs of any customers. Additionally, by using ExpressVPN, all your data is encrypted, meaning you can be sure that if you're ever using public Wi-Fi at a cafe, library, or airport, your data can't be accessed by other people. You can also use it for watching YouTube or Netflix in whatever country you choose. As an example, here's Saturday Night Live in Canada, and here it is in America. So if you'd like to give it a go, you can find out how you can get three months for free by going to expressvpn.com forward slash casually explained, or by clicking the link in the description below.